Hello everyone! Welcome to another Daily Whitebird edition here at Philo Notes. Today I will talk about conditional propositions as one of the types of compound statements used in symbolic logic. And in the same manner as I discussed the other types of compound statements in our previous editions, I will also focus on the nature and characteristics of and the rules in conditional proposition. And I will also provide an example on how to determine the truth value of a conditional proposition. So, to begin with, conditional propositions are compound propositions connected by the words if, then, or just then. And as we learned in the previous discussion titled Propositions and Symbols Used in Symbolic Logic, the symbol for if then is horseshoe. Consider this example. If it rains today, then the road is wet. P Q. And so that if we let P stand for it rains today and Q for the road is wet, then this example is symbolized as follows. P then Q. Please note that the proposition that precedes the connective horseshoe is called the antecedent, and the proposition that comes after it is called consequent. Please note as well that there are cases wherein the words if then is not mentioned in the proposition, yet the proposition remains a conditional one. Consider this example. Passage of the law means morality is corrupted. P. Q. Now, if we analyze the proposition, it is very clear that it is a conditional proposition because it suggests a cause and effect relation. Thus, the proposition can be stated as follows If the law is passed, then morality will be corrupted. Now, if we let P stand for the law is passed and Q for morality will be corrupted, then the proposition is symbolized as P then Q. Another important thing to note is that sometimes the antecedent is stated after the consequent. Now if this happens, then we have to symbolize the proposition accordingly. Let's take this example. Morality would be corrupted should the abortion law is passed. P. Q. If we analyze this proposition, it is clear that the antecedent is abortion law is passed. And the consequent is morality would be corrupted. Hence, the proposition morality would be corrupted should the abortion law is passed is symbolized as Q, then P. Again, as I already pointed out in my previous discussion, the variables provided after the proposition represent the propositions in the entire proposition respectively. Thus, in the statement, morality would be corrupted should the abortion law is passed, P, Q. The variable P stands for morality would be corrupted, and Q stands for abortion law is passed. Again, since Q is our antecedent and P is our consequent, and since in symbolizing conditional propositions, we need to write the antecedent first and then the consequent, so the proposition morality would be corrupted so the abortion law is passed would be symbolized as follows. Q, then P. Now, let's proceed to the rules in conditional propositions. So, the rules in conditional propositions state that a conditional proposition is false if the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. Thus, other than this form, the conditional proposition is true. 
Now, let me illustrate this point in a truth table. And so, if P is true and Q is true, then P then Q is true. If P is true and Q is false, then P then Q is false. And if P is false and Q is true, then P then Q is true. And if P is false and Q is false, then P then Q is true. As we can see, the rules in conditional propositions say that the only instance wherein the conditional proposition becomes false is when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. Let us consider this example. If it rains today, then the road is wet. Now, the first row in the truth table says that P is true and Q is true. So, obviously, P then Q is true. This is because if it is true that it rains today, then it must also be true that the road is wet. Now, in the second row, it says that P is true and Q is false. So, P then Q must be false. This is because if it is true that it rains today, then it must necessarily follow that the road is wet. However, it is said in the truth table that Q is false. That is, the road is not wet. Hence, the conditional proposition is false. Again, it is impossible for the road not to get wet if it rains. Now, the third row says that P is false and Q is true. Now, if this is the case, then P then Q is true. And this is because if it is false that it rains today, in other words, it does not rain today, it does not necessarily follow that the road is dry. Because even if it does not rain, the road may still be wet. Because, for example, a fire truck passes by and spills water on the road. Now, lastly, the fourth row in the truth table says that P is false and Q is false. Now, if this is the case, then P then Q is true. And this is because Based on the example, it says, It does not rain today, and the road is not wet. So obviously, the conditional proposition is true. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for joining me today in this edition of our daily whiteboard here at Philo Notes as we try to make the understanding of philosophy incredibly easy. Keep looking forward to our series of editions on the topic Symbolic Logic. And I hope you find this material helpful. And if you do, feel free to subscribe. Thanks. Take care.